Hey guys, it's Nerd Nick, and I'm bringing you a brand new tutorial series on how to design your very own foam board airplane. Now you might be asking yourself, wait a minute Nick, didn't you already do one of these series? And you're absolutely right, I did. I, I uh, covered a six part series a couple years ago. Got great feedback from the community on the content and how it just helped so many people design their own airplane. That's awesome. So why would I do this again, you might ask? Well, a couple reasons. One, I've learned a whole lot since that original series. I think I've designed multiple dozens of planes at this point, so I want to share that new knowledge with you. Two, I'm using a brand new program called Adobe Illustrator, and it's much more powerful, use more flexibility, it's just a much better base to design than the original program. So I want to teach you guys how to do the design on this program. Three, the original series was like six hours long or so. I'd like to condense that to give you guys some more bite-sized, you know, immediate information so you don't have to sit through such, you know, uh, long hours of me joining on. And the last reason is I'm actually, this is the reason I'm most excited about, is I've come up with this template file that I'm going to be sharing with you guys so anyone following the series can use this template file. And, and basically what this is, is it's a pre um, built section that, that's going to let you springboard off of the design and, and, and you don't have to do all the little minutia details that I've already figured out. You're going to build off of these pieces which will cut your design time down and it's going to cut everything down and it makes everything already line up and, and much much more fast uh, development. So I hope um, you guys can use this template. I will be using it to show you how to design the airplanes. I'm really excited. I think this is going to help really really take off um, uh, or speed up the process for you to design your first airplane. Alright, so going through this series, I'm going to be using um, the Yak uh, 3. This is a really cool airplane that I um, have wanted to design for a while. It's, it's a very basic airplane in that it doesn't have, it's not, tw it's not a twin, it doesn't have an EDF, it doesn't have some crazy angles. It's just a pretty standard Warbird. And um, I would highly suggest that for your first plane, especially if this is the first time you've designed, or maybe you're even just kind of in the, getting new to scratch building in general, is start with a simple plane. Pick a basic Warbird. And I know that's not the most exciting thing, but it will help you a lot if you can kind of get that basic down before you try something more challenging, right? Like a twin or an EDF or something that has some um, more complicated geometry. If you start with a basic fixed wing like this, uh, you know, Mustang, a Spitfire, something just so you learn, you will be more successful, I promise, in the end. Um, for this first part, uh, this first uh, you know section of the series, we're going to talk about the basics of the program. So Illustrator, why am I using Illustrator? Well, Illustrator is a vector-based program. It is not raster like Photoshop, so you can do a lot more powerful things later on. Um, you can resize, you can stretch um, the file without any manipulation or, or any distortion or anything. Um, and also, the most important key here is that this file is compatible. You know, whatever you when you complete your um, plan and you save that plans, um, that file is compatible with a laser cutter, with a CNC, with other um, you know uh, plotting machines. That's a big deal because if you ever want to share your plans or, or if you have your own cutter, your plans must be vector based to do that. So this program gives you that base um, right out the door, much more powerful, files more compatible across the board. So yes, uh, Illustrator is the way to go. Now if you do not have Illustrator, you think thinking, Nick, it's an expensive program, I don't have it. There is a program called Inkscape that you can use, it's free. Um, it'll do the same stuff, but I'll, I'll admit I'm not that familiar with the different keyboard commands and the different tools that we'll be using. So I'm gonna be showing you the tools I use in Photoshop, or in Illustrator, excuse me. Um, they all should exist in Inkscape, but you might have to figure out how to open that panel or whatever, right? But it's totally doable. You can end up with the same result and it's free. If you do wanna use uh, Illustrator, they, Adobe offers a 30 day trial. So you can, um, once I've, you know, finished this series and you've watched it all, you can download the 30 day trial and give it a shot, right? You can decide if you like it or not and, and then move on. Um, if you do like it, they have a t uh, 20 bucks a month for a single individual. Um, you can pick Illustrator and, and you know buy it. $20 a month, you've got the program, you can move forward, great. So that out of the way, um, let's take a look over here. So first step, you need to select your three view image. I have already picked the Yak 3, you'll need to decide which plane are you designing. Head over to Google, do a quick search for that plane name, space 3, space view. Grab a 3-view. Three 3-view three has uh, a couple pieces to it. One, the plane is shown in the top view, so you have wingspan, 
and your H tab. It's also shown a um, side view, so you get to see uh, the shape of the plane as well as your vertical stabilizer. And then most of them will also have a front uh, kind of cross section there. You ultimately want to find um, a three view that also has these cross sections. Now these are important because it's as if they took the plane and cut it into slices at certain uh, lengths. And then you turn that slice in front of you and you can kind of see what does it look like uh, with, with its shape. And these are used for the turtle deck former. So this will give our plane that you know authentic shape. So if you have these, you can use it as a reference. If you do not have them, you gotta kinda wing it, it's a little more difficult. But try to find a three view that also has these sections. Now, in this first part, we're gonna look at um, a lot of the tools uh, that we need to use because ultimately, uh, I'm, I'm gonna assume that you don't know how to use Illustrator. So I'm gonna kinda walk you through in this video some of the, the tools we're gonna use, those beginning steps, and I'll continue to reference those throughout the series, but ultimately I wanna show you the initial setup so that you can um, mimic as much as you can based on how I have my uh, uh, Illustrator setup. So the first thing, is that we want to make sure you have the appropriate windows selected. What I mean by that is there are various screens that you can turn on or off, various tools that can be you know visible uh, using Illustrator, and most of them are not needed at all for what we're doing. So what I recommend is whatever came turned on, all you really need is layers, stroke, and transparency. And anything that you turn on over here, just clicking stuff, you'll see things either pop up like this, or you'll see them show up over on the right hand side, right? If there's stuff on the right hand side that you don't need, uh, like this color box for example, I can right click and close. I just need stroke. Stroke is basically the width of your line, so as we're drawing um, our different paths, it, this is how thick the line is, right? Um, the uh, transparency we're going to be using for stuff like this if we ever need to overlay another image to kind of see and trace it then we can use the transparency to kind of fade in and out that you know that image so you can see through it and then ultimately the biggest one is going to be the layers because layers are really what make uh, all of this possible uh, if I look at my templates just as a quick example one of these you know pieces right so this this is like the the belly nose plate if I go over here to the right hand side in the layers, um, underneath this main tree, right, so I have the top level layer uh, and then I have these subs, um, there is one that would indicate that piece and I need to find it, where is it at, it is the belly nose. If I click this circle on the right, it actually selects everything inside of this layer. So if I open this carrot up, I can see all these lines, all these paths that indicate or that, that group up to be this piece. And the way you group something is I um, would go over here to one of the selection tools and if I draw a box around lines, then you have the ability to kind of group those. You can right click um, and you can go to group or you can use a keyboard command, control G. And when you do that, it'll put a bunch of these paths themselves. So just as an example, if I selected a couple of these and then control G, it's gonna make another group even underneath this group. That group itself when I put all those you know paths together, it lets me move around these pieces you know completely uh, as a group without manipulating anything or stretching or whatever. Uh, you can just move one you know um, path if you want one one item, um, but ultimately that's not going to be something you do a whole lot uh, because you're, you're going to be working with the entire piece you know once it's been created. Now the way I just even move that to begin with, I'll call this out too, is there's two tools that we're going to be using all the time. You have your selection tool, which is keyboard command V. And what this does is it, when you click V or, or click this tool and then click any, any um, line, if there are grouped lines within whatever layer you're picking, whatever line you're picking, if this line is grouped with other things, which it is, then V clicking will select all those things as if I click the entire layer, okay? That's important because once I click it and then I go to one of the lines, I can't click anywhere. If I click on the line, click and hold, I can move around that whole piece. Now let's say I did just want to move one thing. I want to make an adjustment. If I click the other one, which is A, this is the um, uh, direct selection tool, A and then click, I can grab just that one line or whatever lines I want, right? Now if I click V and click one of those lines again because they are still grouped, I now move them all together still, but it's all weird, right? This line's all out of place. But I still have this layer concept, right, where they're all within this tree. 
I know this might be confusing if you're not used to layers or if you're used to another program, but this part, you got to rewind it, watch it again. You have to grasp this concept of how do you manipulate these lines? How do you move stuff around either as an independent line with A or the direct selection tool or as a group with V or the selection tool? Okay, it's really important. Now that I've messed this piece up, uh, I'm going to undo all this. Illustrator has like an, an infinite level of going undos or redos. So I'm going to um, hold down control and then press Z, 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 Z until it brings it all the way back to being normal. And I can go forward by holding control shift Z. So that will go forward, right? And, and, and so you can kind of scroll backwards and forwards through your, your history here as you make changes. Okay. So that's the selection tool, the direct selection tool layers and even uh, undo and redo we just talked about okay those are some of the most basic things we're going to look at and then we'll be using the line tool a lot as well as the pen tool and I'll show you kind of how all those work and, and all that fun stuff but that that base there is super important to get um, just as a, as a basic you know what which uh, windows you need to see and then the layer concept that we'll, we'll keep digging into um, throughout this series so going back over here, um, the, the, the first thing we want to do with our actual plane, right, because this isn't a tutorial on, on how to use Illustrator, uh, obviously, it's, it's just I want to give you the base of Illustrator so we can jump into the actual plane. So let's do that now. Once you've got the, the, the how do you control the program piece down, we want to look at your three view. So go ahead and open that file in Illustrator or in Inkscape, whatever you're using, and we need to establish scale. Now, the, all the templates that I'm providing you are based around about a 40 inch wingspan plane or about a thousand millimeters. I design with centimeters and millimeters so I'll be referencing that throughout the series. You're welcome to use any units you'd like that you're familiar with. To set your units, if you go to edit preferences and then units, you can define what you want your units to be. You can select inches for everything if you prefer inches, whatever you want, doesn't matter. Set your, your uh, preference there though and then everything that you do, like if I take this tool, this line tool here and I draw a line, you'll see there's like a measuring tape, right? It tells me one centimeter, two, three, four, five, six, whatever. Um, that will be in inches if you're using inches. So we'll be using this little you know, uh, pop up here that's telling us our, our length all the time. Okay, so use whatever units you want. I'm using centimeters and millimeters. Now th this template is designed um, to, to work with about a 40 inch or a thousand millimeter plane. That's similar to my MiG-3, my P-39, my Chipmunk, my um, all my larger size planes are using these templates essentially. Same with uh, the Flight Test Spitfire or Mustang or, or the Bushwhacker, all those again around this size. If you are planning to use a different size plane, a bigger one, smaller one, these templates probably won't work for you out the gate. You can still stretch them if you want or whatever, but ultimately start with the 40 inch plane for, for this series if you want to learn and follow along with me using these templates. Um, so with that said, on my reference image, I need to get this image to about a 40 inch size wingspan. So I don't even know how big it is right now. How do I, how do I mess, you know, how do I figure that out? If I take my line tool, I can draw a line and see how big it is, right? Like th this is real centimeters, real inches, whatever you're using. If you were to print this out, it would be this size. So I'm going to click and I'm actually going to hold the shift key. And the reason I do that is if I don't hold shift and I click hold and move, it starts to draw a line, but it's free form, right? It, it's like every degree possible. I want a straight line, so if I hold shift, it's gonna jump to the closest, you know, straight at zero, 45, 90, whatever. It's gonna jump to those, those, um, uh, uh, those angles. Now, straight lines, really only possible if you're holding shift. So if I let go of shift, it goes free form, hold shift, it jumps to, and then I, I'm still, you know, holding down my click, my uh, left uh, mouse button, but essentially it gives me the ability to um, keep a certain angle. So I'm going to draw a straight line and see how, um, what's the wingspan on this, right? So if I draw this down, it's only 27 centimeters. That's tiny. That's bitty. That's not even not even something you would do as a micro. It's, it's super small, right? So I know, okay, that's that's where I'm at. How do I get to where I want to be? 
um, to, to do this, I'm going to look at uh, a, a kind of um, setting the frame uh, of my my artboard, and that's what they call this white space behind here. I'm going to do a Control minus minus, which is a zoom out, or Control plus plus on your keyboard, which zooms in. And this all this white space, this is my artboard. Okay, I'm. I'm using Dollar Tree foam for my design. Now you could be using Depron or Elmer's or whatever you're using, it doesn't matter. Um, if you're doing a foam board design, all your pieces are gonna fit on that piece of foam board, right? So what I like to do, just to keep this visual straight in my head, is I like to make this artboard the same size as the foam that I'm using. So that it, may, it, it visually, I'm looking at this, this screen, and I say, oh, I can imagine how big this piece is so it's not so abstract. To do that, I'm going to go to document setup and then edit artboards. And what this lets me do is I can drag and you know drag around if I want or up here on the top I can say I want this to be 30 inches by 20 inches. Now you notice I'm putting in inches even though my document is designed around centimeters and millimeters. This will take whatever you want. Um, and then it'll convert it to whatever your primary, whatever your units were under the, the preferences, okay? So I don't know off the top of my head all the time what 35 inches is in centimeters or whatever, so I can just put in 35 inches and it'll convert it if necessary, right? So 30 by 20 and boom, now I have an artboard that is the size of a piece of foam. Pretty cool, right? So now when I look at this picture, I can say, well, of course it's too small. Like th this, this would be a bitty aircraft, right? So here's what I'm gonna do to make this really easy. I'm gonna take my line tool and I'm gonna draw the width of one wing right so so on, on a, a foam board airplane usually one wing fits on one sheet of foam um, at this size right you this is only 30 inches which a plane at 40 inches you can't fit both wings on one piece right so one wing if I was building a 40 inch airplane would be about 20 inches or about 50 centimeters okay this 50 centimeter line is the width, or sorry, the yeah, the 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 width of one wing now, the the length of it. So, um, if I take this image, I can now stretch it to be this size, right, for one wing. Now, how do I do that? Now, first, first, I want to tell you something. Now, this this is important too. This just line has disappeared. On uh, with, with this type of program, you have two to kind of two color options. You have the ability to actually give the line a color, and then give the inside of the line of color. Now this path doesn't have one, it's just a straight line. But if I were to draw a box like this, there's actually inside space. And over here on the left you have these two dudes here. You have fill and then you have stroke. Stroke would actually be the path, the actual line, the border, you know, the individual path. The fill is anything in inside of that path if it were to close off, right? So for, for whatever reason the default is nothing there, there's no there's no color so it's invisible right you can't see it anymore it's there but there's no no way to really tell it's there so if I click on this and then click this button over here this is the default fill or D with your keyboard what this does is it turns the inside white which you can see over here and the outside the path it turns it uh, black okay so now I have this piece. Now I don't want the inside to be anything so I'm going to click on this one, the white one, and I'm going to click this guy here. This is the none. So now what I've done is I've created a black outline and nothing in the center. So if I go my line over here I can do the same thing. I can flip it and then do nothing. Now I have a regular old line that I can see. Okay. We'll come back to this and talk more about it later but that, that piece, if you ever draw a line that's the wrong color or it's invisible, you need to go play around with this. Your, your fill for everything that we're doing through the whole series will always be blank. Always make your fill invisible and then your, your actual stroke color, your line color will vary based on is it a 50% cut, is it a full cut, whatever. Okay. Alright, so we've got our 50 centimeter line which is going to be the length of one wing. So if I grab this image now, I'm going to go ahead and hold shift on my keyboard and, and shift always um, gives me like specified um, uh, percentages, right? Wh whether the angle or turns. If I just, if I go up um, and don't press shift and go to the corner here, what lets me, you see the arrow turns to a rotate arrow. If I click now, it'll rotate freely, right? At any, any degree you want, which isn't helpful. If I hold shift and do that, it'll actually jump to predefined, you know, the basically uh, 45 degree increments, okay?
So I want to turn this on its side, so I'm gonna hold shift, click and turn, boom, now it's on its side, and I can see when I put it up next to it, I wanna take this image from the wingtip here to the center, and I wanna stretch it to the size of this line. And to do that proportionally, I'm going to hold shift again, grab the corner and drag. If I don't hold shift, then it will stretch and look all distorted, okay? So you want to make sure you hold shift and then click the corner and drag, and now you can stretch it proportionally um, to the to the what you're doing here. Okay, so so there I'm gonna, again I'm going this line from the tip to the center, so I need to keep stretching this until I'm about there. Almost there. A little bit smaller. Okay. You can also use your arrow keys. Uh, if you're on the V tool, that means you're selecting again the whole object here, the whole group, and I can move them with my arrows to see it's perfect, right? So tip right to the middle. Boom, done, perfect. So now I've got a, um, uh, a reference image that fits on the sheet of foam Right, and 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 in my you know spatial uh, awareness here, I can tell now how big is this stuff, right? Like it all makes sense now if I reference a piece of foam, which is what my artboard is. I go and delete this line. I don't need it anymore. I've got my image. Now moving forward th throughout this whole series, we're going to be kind of tracing this image, and to do that successfully, we have to um, uh, create additional layers and kind of lock this one down because we don't want to touch and manipulate this one anymore. So to do that, I'm gonna go ahead and go down here to new layer. I'm gonna create that new layer. And then there is this little guy here that lets me lock this bottom layer. So now I can't move my image. If I undo that, I can move it. If I lock it, I can't move it now. So now I can draw over the top of it, do what I want without manipulating it. If later on I want to turn it off, which I will, you can even hide it with this button here, this little eye, you can turn it on or off. And then at some point throughout the series, we're actually gonna then completely delete this. It'll go away fully. We won't even need it anymore. But for now, we're gonna go ahead and lock it. I'm gonna come back over here, and you'll notice again my default went to nothing. Um, I'm gonna, just to set it, I'm gonna draw a line, and I'm gonna go ahead and flip it again and turn that back. So now I have my, my proper fill, okay? So guys, in this uh, first video, all we were gonna cover is one, um, the scope of this, which is we're going to design some airplanes together. I'm going to give you guys all the knowledge I can on how to do that successfully. I've got these awesome templates which are going to speed up the entire design process and give you guys a winning combination of, of these proportions and pieces that are going to be awesome. So I'm excited about that. And then we also set up kind of the tool piece. How, how do we use Illustrator? How do we use the tools? What do we need to do? What do we need to look at? So if you guys learned something, you like this, give me a like and subscribe uh, and tune in for the next part of the series where we actually dig in to start designing this aircraft. We'll see you guys next time.